meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council is being recorded. It will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. I want to thank the co-chairs, Matt, Julianne, for all their hard work and everyone on this committee. So I will make you the host and we will catch up in the new year. Have a great Excellent. holiday season, everyone. Thank you. You too, Angela. Thank Appreciate you, Angela. Thanks, how much Andy. you've helped us. Okay, to start, I will read um, the uh, initial script about our virtual meeting. Pursuant to the chapter 20, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by joining the Zoom link posted on uh, the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website uh, a, a, a link with audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So now I'll take roll call. Matt. Here. Eleanor. Here. Robin. Here. Rachel. Here. Okay. So to to start, I hope um, you might have had a chance to at least glance at uh, the, the draft numbers that we have. I, I do want to give um, a few updates as far as um, there were some that we had not assigned values to by the end of the meeting um, on Monday. And um, we I did uh, assign numbers to them for, for our purposes. So you might specifically want to look at, I believe it was um, gallery A3. Oof. I have them in another email, just a minute. Um, the Emily Dickinson Museum, and there was one other. Um, Matt, any chance you could look that up in that, that email? Tell me what the third one was that I had to put an estimate on. Let me see if I can. Uh, Is it the son-in-law? I think we had a number for that. I'm not. Yeah, I'm sorry. I actually didn't realize that these were. Um, I, I didn't realize that that was a, a question. Um, well, we had discussed them and ran out of time. And her right. cinema. Okay, so you know, please be, be sure to note those in particular. Uh, another piece of business was about uh, Catherine Stryker's um, art installation, the sculpture for the North Amherst Library. We did get a um, letter from the Jones Library in support requesting this piece of artwork. So um, that satisfied you know, our, any questions we might have had about whether it met our guidelines. Um, and with those details in place, um, as far as how we were estimating as we went along, we ended up n not allocating only $413, which is, I think, like 0.65% of the total that we're allocating. So um, what you have now includes those funds. They were uh, added to Amherst Cinema and Gallery A3's grant requests. Uh, both of which are, you know, local institutions that, you know, serve the community on a large scale, but all, all of this is just a draft and it's and it's up for discussion. And uh, Matt, do you think you'd, we'd like to go through the denials next? Um, just to be clear. Um, I have not, I did not I organize that in such a way that I could do it super efficiently. No, no, um, I can do that. I'm just saying, do you in, agree that that'd be the next uh, topic to cover before we open it to discussion? Yeah, sure. I mean, yes, I think that's a good idea. Okay. You know, the um, as we talked about before, you know, the denial reasons are basically the the most common one is just saying that it, your grant didn't bring as much public benefit as the other grant as the other applications that we reviewed. And that's, you know, in, in most cases, that's a pretty open and shut, um, you know, response that that is also the one, though, that, you know, is sort of easiest to to ask a reconsideration on. Right. Because, I mean, 
obviously the applicants disagree, you know, many of the applicants will disagree with that position. And, you know, so I think um, we've, we've had last year, we had somebody who, who wanted us to reconsider and, and they actually don't come to us for that request. They go to the mass cultural council with that request. MCC then hears their request and MCC is actually the one who makes the call as to whether or not we reconsider. So we didn't wind up reconsidering last year. Um, but the year before, I believe we did have a, a couple that we reconsidered. And, you know, that's just kind of part of the process. It's a natural flow. Um, so, it, yeah, I mean, just because I haven't looked at them as a group, you know, yeah. I think um, there's a couple that that we would say don't, you know, don't sort of conform to the um, arts and humanities. That's that's one of the denial areas that we've that we've hit on. But mostly it'll be um, local. Benefit. Yeah. And I, I'm happy to go through them one by one. And you make an excellent point that it's really not in, in our hands in, in the end, you know. So um, if we feel, you know, confidently that, that this, you know, either is not enough benefit or outside of the guidelines, we just simply state that. And, and it's in the hands of the grantee to come back and make a case, which doesn't happen all that frequently, but does. And then the final decision as to whether or not we, we have to consider funding it again. We, we will know, so, but we can't finalize it. Unless you feel differently, and... I don't think we need to go through all 15. I don't. Uh, you know, I guess I would actually ask for you and everybody to just look at the list that's out there. And, and if there is any that are zeros that jump out as being cause for concern, maybe just take a moment with that. Because I think going through all 15, we'd, we'd wind up re-deliberating all 15, all 15 yeah. of them. I don't know if we want to do that. Okay. Just going to pause here for a moment while all of you have a chance to uh, take a look. And one thing that's really helpful as I look through Lefevre, um didn't have a venue. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask the life appreciation through drawing and painting? That one was also no venue, no date, correct? Uh, is that Masala? Um, yes. That was not enough, not not enough public benefit. I, I see your note that says that, folks, okay. I, you know, but I'm just, as I look at it, I'm noticing it doesn't have a venue or a date. That's true, that's true. And there's, uh, let me double check, but I don't believe that there's any letter of support from any, you know, possible locations either. So we, we could certainly, you know, use that assignment as to why. I'm just looking at it, confirm. I have another one while well, you're looking at that one up. I'd like to also mm -hmm. flag is the um, Taylor Rose Mickens live and recorded concert. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the note that I have on here is that it didn't have enough local benefit is a pro promo album for a band. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, the, the fact that it's a promo album, I don't think is something that we, I would not draw attention to that as being a denial reason. Um, you know, I think many of our applicants are, are, you know, working musicians. Um, and it looks like they're, my call we're plan, planning a live concert professionally recorded at the drake um i guess i might question whether that's you know i mean do we have do, is there is there enough reason to totally zero out zero out this this applicant i'm trying to remember the discussion and there have been so many I know. Uh, but which is wonderful 
Um, I think there are budget concerns, but on, and I, I was listening, but I, I don't, I didn't actually share those budget concerns myself, to be honest. And I probably should have spoken up on Monday, but it was just a busy, I, I didn't. Um, but I mean, people had concerns about like them creating merchandise, mm -hmm. the giveaways and stuff. And but we can always just say it doesn't have local benefit. I just, you know, it seems like a pretty benign, like a con, you know, it's like a, it's a non-chamber music concert. Um, there also was no letter of support from the Drake confirming the date, the, the uh, cash outlay was, um, They've got a they've got a specific date on here, April 29th, which but you're right. I mean, if there's no letter, there's no letter. Um so just looking at the budget. Does anyone else, you know, recall or want to speak to what we spoke to at the time? It's too which one are we looking at? We are looking at it's um, on page 422, roughly, Taylor Mickens. And, so, and has more name than that, I think. Yeah, T Taylor, Taylor Rose, Rose Mickens live and recorded concert. So one thing, Julian, I, I will say is that it, this letter is, is a little bit odd. It says, you know, we're currently working on getting documentation for our live and recorded concert at the Drake. When we get documentation confirming our date for our show, we will send it as soon as possible. Um, and we didn't receive anything. So I think that might be the crux of it in the end. Yeah. Um, I think I, I could support a denial on that on that basis. That because that okay. the letter of support cannot be a letter saying TBD, we will get you, you know, like and then, not, and then they didn't, you know. So it's now it's now, you know, almost two months later. And you know, there's certainly um, we know the folks at the Drake would be glad to provide the letter if somebody had had followed through, right? Yeah. So I think, I, I think that's okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking the time with that. I just wanted to be comfortable with the denial reason for that one. Okay. Does anyone else have anything that um, they just want to double check on why we might not be including it? If if, if so, I have. Once we're done with that, I have some other numbers uh, to share. Um, just quickly, I know we, I remember the, uh, I just wanted to clarify my memory or, or reconfirm the one um, that was uh, the application from Pioneer Valley Symphony, the one for the third and fourth grade students, the, the mystery, the missing music one. And because the, the ask is 350 and it, our, as I recall, our reason for denial is just that it's not, there's not enough benefit for our local community is that correct because it's in greenfield yeah yeah okay. i mean it's 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 in greenfield for greenfield schools you know um it came down to you know all right how many homeschool kids from amherst are, are attending you know like it was uh and and not only that there there was a bit of a you know the thinking that we we do need to support our own schools we are supporting our own public schools and what's what's the benefit to Amherst to shift that money to an event in Greenfield when we could you know further support our, our own schools are we all all about set with going through the denials okay so another item to call your attention to is um there were those of us huh I'm so sorry um <laughs> Laura Wall and Sam Wink, the last two out of the last three, both denials. Um, I just don't have good notes on that. I'm sorry. Um, the, the the Laura Wall we said was it was exercise, you know, to okay. so not it just culture. really wasn't wasn't appropriate um, as far as arts and culture grant. Yeah, I think you know everybody should get out and move, but. Um, there are other groups to, to uh, fund an exercise um, weekly class. Yep. 
makes sense. Okay, and then, and then the other one, no date, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. So, so now I'd like to call your attention to a grant that uh, Matt championed and I I questioned, and out of um, benefit to the com community, I think it is correct to to leave it on there, and that would be the Hilltown. Help me out. It's it's a, a grant for seven hundred dollars to Hilltown families su suggests. Uh, this is something that we have funded year year to year, and it is a go-to resource for people to find our grantees. Um, you know, that we're, we're definitely divided on whether it, it meets our um, guidelines fully, you know, although there is another website, the, I believe the poetry website that we're funding. Um, so is there, is there anyone who still, still feels firmly about denying this, this grant? I honestly hadn't even noticed that you had put the funding in there for that. So just so everybody knows, I did not slip the 700 in. No, um, no, I, 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 <laughs> under the I, darkness I, of night. <laughs> I, I did it. And quite frankly, I mean, if we're divided, we, while we do plan to vote on this as a whole, we can take a vote uh, and let, let the majority, um, you know, point us in the direction of whether we, you know, deny that or, and we're funded. So, so the vote would be to whether or not to deny rather than, okay. Yep. I, I agree with the vote. What okay. was, sorry, what were the questions raised about this one again? Uh, if there's a way to briefly. This, this is one it's, it's a website, like online newsletter. It's updated weekly <clears throat> and it has a, a running list of all of the activities that are upcoming. I mean, Matt, you've used it quite a bit more. Maybe you can Share is it is it a, a you know a weekly or can you look further out than a week? It's it's a well organized compendium. It's like you know here's the hot events for the week for children and families, and then it's also but they also do give you several months in advance things that are coming up. It, you know I, I I think reasonable there's a, reasonable people you know there's reasonable arguments for denial because it's a it's an aggregator, but I think when I think about our mission of supporting arts and culture. And, you know, I literally just think about, you know, having kids and saying, what can I do this weekend that's, that's you know, unique and, and cultural for my kids and opening up that newsletter and getting three or four ideas every single time. And then talking to um, Jenny, um, Jenny Lind, you know, who was a wonderful member previously. I mean, she was the one a couple of years ago when it first came along. I remember she just was such a passionate, you know, champion for it having used it, you know, a decade ago with her when her kids were very young. Um, so, you know, but I, I think there's a reasonable argument against the aggregation. I just, I'm not convinced that we have a guideline that actually says aggregators are a problem. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah. sure that that's. And it does, you know, if, if it comes down to community benefit, it's, it's hard to get around that for the, all of these events to be beneficial to the community, they have to be known and to to not you know continue to support a resource that that you know truly is it, i mean it's basically free marketing for all of our grantees and folks that aren't our grantees that you know would be of interest to our community so the way i when i kind of step back and really thought about it for seven hundred dollars we're delivering a lot more um knowledge about the culture that's available even beyond our own grantees which really is part of our our charter mission is you know to make make things happen which takes awareness so is there anyone who wants to call wants to make a motion to call this to a vote or should we leave it as it is i um i appreciate what you all have said and i think that there's um i remember last year somebody had um also, I mean, I understand this is an aggregator, but I remember last last <clears throat> cycle, um, somebody had, um, I think, filed a grant to create a website or to, um, and then we denied that on the basis of this is not what our money should be used for. And and I guess um, I started out just thinking this should be an outright denial for, for this particular grant. Um, but, you know, if all of you, I mean, if, if we put it to a vote, I mean, the majority mm -hmm. probably will support it to some level, but I don't, I don't think I would agree to 
to um, to to grant the full amount. Okay, I can. So that's that's my yeah. that's where I stand. But you know, we can we can vote on on well, it or not. Well, before we know. vote on that, you bring up a good point that last year we we did just uh, deny funding a particular grant, and most of that budget was to go to make a website. It was. I don't know, several thousand dollars. And the purpose of that website was, I believe, just to let families and school children in Amherst know that this particular group would like to feature their artwork um, in another event later. So at, at that point, it really came down to, in my mind, you know, benefit to the public because you can call the teachers and ask them you can email them like we it just seemed truly unnecessary to go about what they were doing in that way and expensive and you know there are like wix websites that you could just slap up there or you know free godaddy websites like it was it just kind of was un unreasonable and and just out of touch with the current approach so you know, to, to that end, I think we had very sound reason, reasoning to deny that. So um, if you'd like to put it to a vote to uh, determine, yes, Matt. Well, so I, I just want to chime in because I, I was just looking at the, um, you know, this would be the denial as an aggregator, I guess, that um, when we, we have, we have four kind of four areas for denial. Um, you know, one is uh, one is that the thing doesn't align with the arts, humanity, and science. One is that it doesn't have enough public benefit. One is that it's discriminatory, and one is that it uh, doesn't meet local criteria. Lo local criteria. And I was just kind of looking through there to see if you know if if this is a con this aggregator thing is a concern. And and there's a sentence in the local council guidelines document on the ninth on page nine that says um, art refers to the creation of work creation of work in the crafts and performing visual media folk design literary and interdisciplinary arts but then it, then there's a second sentence that says in addition they also include the presentation preservation of and education about works in these disciplines and i feel like that second sentence does kind of hit on the sort of the value of the you know the presentation being the aggregation um of the events so for me i think that that actually helps sort of reinforce my my support for this as meeting our criteria. Yeah, I, I thank you for for referencing that and, and sharing it with us because it it they do have uh, visual depictions of of events as well, right? It it helps to actually get you know some of the the art conceptually out there and and to inspire the community. And I think you know that's it. It does really inspire the community to gather, and that's at our core mission. So. Um, I truly support fully funding it. It's, it's, I'm sorry if I've taken us down a path where um, I was so resolutely against it, but that's one of the things. That's why one of the reasons I'm still here, several years into this, is um, you know Matt and I love to disagree, but he often brings me around, and sometimes you know he sees these things my way. So I, I love our shared vision, and. Um, so Rachel, you don't support fully funding it. I now I have to put Eleanor and Robin on the spot. Do either of you support fully funding it? I would support fully funding it. All right. So I don't think we necessarily need to put it to a vote unless Rachel, you want a motion to make it official. No, no. I okay. think it's just, you know, for the purpose of discussion, right? Yeah. Because... No, I'm glad we discussed it. I, I I feel even better about it now than when I just slapped it back on the uh the uh, draft estimate. So thank you. I think we're part of the Greater Pioneer Valley Valley. <laughs> and this is part of that. That's why we fund mm -hmm. things that are not here. Yeah. Yeah. Being part of the whole culture mm -hmm. of the valley. And if this is something that's really used, mm -hmm. then um yeah. I, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it actually speaks again to our kind of regional events that, that you know, to to increase regional um, kind of collaboration and, you know, coming together, not just here, but, you know. So with that, I do have, you know, a, like I said, a little bit of analysis 
that that I did um, for some areas that that we discussed. So let me let me start from the top. There were 91 grants. We're allocating based on this draft, which is not official yet. 73 of them. 22 of those grants are fully funded. Uh, the average allocation across the 73 grants is $871. Uh, we talked a great deal about just how much percent to total we had in music. So music um, as a as a total, and I in, in this case, I'm going by the MCC's categories of music and uh, opera theater, and not including um, interdisciplinary events that include art and music. So, you know, certainly there's music at the powwow, there's music at the Klezmer uh, celebration, but um, my number here is, is just strictly where they self-defined as music or, or opera theater performance. So that's $20,700 is what we currently have on this draft. So it's roughly 33% of our total budget. And one of the things that I found really interesting here that supports probably leaving music where it is, is that the average grant for music um, is at $714 as compared to the average grant award allocation for everything at 871. So when we look at that and we look at the number of, without really going through with a fine tooth comb, but the number of times that a musical performance um, has several artists coming together, often with with some sort of tech support. Um, it, you know, we're we're not funding them on average more than our the rest of the the grants, and you know, music's a big deal. You know, so uh, I don't I don't think thirty three percent of our annual budget is misrepresents um, the community's desire to participate in musical events. So I'm, I'll give you a couple more things and then I'll open it up to discussion. We also looked at different locations. So the locations I saw as being a trend of um, having you know, multiple grantees um, have their events there um, were uh, Amherst Regional Public Schools as a whole. So all locations um, and, and not including like Matilda where groups renting, just renting it out. So um, the public schools, we have roughly $5,850 or 9% of our total 2023 allocations. The Bang Senior Center for uh, the allocations in this, in this draft, it's $2,250. So that's 3.5% um, of all of our allocations. And kind of looking at this and seeing you know that we're supporting our the youth in our community at around nine percent, and the um, the senior center at over three percent. Uh, we're getting we're, we are serving more people overall through the public schools, but you know captive audience and from you know the um, endorsements we've heard of of the uh, cultural events that some of our um, council members have attended. I think it's money well spent, but I, it does seem to me to be pretty pretty balanced after looking at that. I do think we should still have um, an open dialogue with the senior center and really have them help us in coming years understand which events are their priority um, so that uh, we can we can factor that in. Last. Um, couple of, of locales, the barn in Belchertown, uh, $3,200 worth of allocations, which is 5% of 2023. The Drake at 3,250, 5% again. And the Jones Library, North Amherst Library combined at 4,400, which is 7% of our total allocations, 1,000 of which we have um, set to be allocated to the North uh, Amherst Library's uh, sculpture installation. So that's that's all the number crunching I have, and I would happily open it up to uh, any, um, I, I'd like to start with any kind of topics, just big picture based on those numbers, and then if we'd like to go into specific grants from there. Yeah. 
You guys, okay. Everyone likes the numbers or numbers are boring? No. No, I think it's, I think it's helpful to get a snapshot. Please, yeah, please go ahead, Robin. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, and possibly very helpful, you know, in possible future going for grants or talking to the town about where the money goes or mm -hmm. whatever that is. Um, and also the out of town stuff so we could show, you know, well, do we need different venues? Do we need more venues? Because we think we do. But um, I, I thank you for doing that. No, I think it's, I think the data is great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for putting all that together. It's very, very useful. Um, out of curiosity, did you get any sense of, in terms of applicants, like what percentage of applicants actually are from, are not from right here? Does that make sense? Is it? Um, I, I mean, I'm just trying to remember. Um, I mean, that's, that doesn't have to, you know, really impact our. I don't think, I don't think there's a quick way um, to get that. That would be a matter of going through, you know, grant by grant and looking at the address uh, of the main applicant. And even at that, I think we have to be cautious with that approach because, you know, often a particular group, right, they'll, the, the, just often the main applicant is the person who actually has the time to draft the thing and write it. They sometimes use their home address. So it, you know, I, it could be that somebody who's over in, you know, Northampton is the one who's drafting it, but most of the group is Amherst based, you know, so. Um, or, or the events are happening here, because I think one of the things that we, I know we kept going back to was, oh, they apply to multiple LCCs. And that was something that kind of, you know, boosted um, consideration. So that's, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't need, uh, it, there was just something that occurred to me. It's not, it doesn't really impact. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it, it's, it potentially could be Thanks. worth capturing. I think what Robin was saying overall about, all right, what about the ones when they're not even happening here? But that would be in, in either case here, really kind of a deep dive for someone to go grant by grant. So I think we did a good job doing that as we went along, but to recap it, I don't, I can't just filter and, and add an average. Any, any other overall topics for these, you know, groups and, and it's, you know, calling out that there are events at the Drake. Hey, that, we want that. That's a community center. We want events at the Jones library. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but I think it's good to have an understanding of, you know, how, how we're di distributing the funds to, to the different locations. And it seems to be fair. You know, the one that had the larger number kind of uh, is, is the barn, but I get the impression it's, it's a venue that we don't have a similar version of here in, in Amherst possibly. And that that's why that would be. Okay. So if there's no, no other general topics, to discuss, is there anyone who would like to, to um, speak to any particular grants that you feel um, would, might need adjustment? I do. Yes. Oh. And I'm I'm here. I'm I'm going to turn off my video and mute while I go wrangle dogs and run around my house. But I'm here. Um. So it says I um. And I wasn't part of the discussion on the big band, Ken Longstreet's uh, band, um, but it's 19 people and they do it. This is a, would be at least their third year. It's free. Um, it's most, it's well-known musicians. It's mostly Amherst musicians. And I just feel like thousand dollars is really kind of low and it also it, it isn't free to just use your instruments plus they have to get here um so i was just wondering if the extra what was it 400 and the extra 413 $13. instead of distributing that to like gallery a3 and Amherst cinema if we could give them some more 
Um, also just to acknowledge that they, you know, I know I'm looking for, I want consistency in payment and it's one performance, but it's also 19 musicians. Um, and it seems to me it's kind of becoming like a tradition, an Amherst tradition to have this, you know, what could be more fun than, you know, big band performing this, you know, free concert right in Amherst Center with Amherst musicians. So that was my really only qualifier. Is that the Green Street one, Robin? The no, that they have. It's the, the big, there's quite a few of these. Um, it's Ken, it's Longstreet. Ken Longstreet, right? Yeah. And since you weren't here for the discussion, I don't think that there was anyone who was opposed to fully funding it. I think it was a question of music percent to total um, and, and that it was a big ask. Um, is there anyone here who, you know, is opposed to fully funding it as it is, not regarding the funds that we have to distribute, but just doesn't want to fully fund it? It's Jeff Gabrielli and his Bad News Jazz and Blues Orchestra. I would support finding a way to fully fund it. it it's local, it's here, it's, you know, the community actually participates, it's, it's great music, and it's a lot of people involved, and there's also, you know, technical considerations with, you know, sound and all of that, you know, audio stuff. So they, they do, the whole community that puts it together does a great job, right. so. Right. Um. So I, I have, yeah, I mean, I, I'm in full support of this application as well. I, I think, I actually think Robin's, Robin's initial suggestion of just applying the 413 to that one um, is is actually my preferred option as well, and and the reason is that you know I just I just took that four thirteen and kind of applied it to two large grants. I didn't you know I didn't really think about it too much, but the more that I think about it, the more I like the idea of finding a grant that this is a, this makes a meaningful difference to a high quality you know applicant, um, a known you know no as as you say I mean it's kind of a known applicant that's that's come through year over year. And, so it makes it would make a reason it would make a meaningful difference in their budget, um, and um, and and you know if we do it that way, just move the four thirteen over to them, then we don't have to you know pick funds out of multiple other grants as well. So I think it's a little, just a little cleaner that way. So I I think that's probably the the most that's that would be my preferred approach too. Excellent, I I would support that as well. Okay, Is there any the other discussion to be had? Uh, this is more of a question about a different one. I don't think I disagree with this. I just was trying to remember for the stained glass one. Did we vote to fully fund that? And then was that adjusted? Is that what that 2400 is? Let me take a look. Um, That's a good question. I had the same question, Eleanor. Um, Gonna take me a minute to find it. Yeah, it's Musprat, M U S P R A T T. Okay, so that was it, was it something in the budget? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think it was just that the sorry, Julian, do you want to go ahead? No, no, no. no. Okay. I'm, I'm now I'm going to look at the budget. So okay. I, was, I remember being very keen to focus on this one. So um, the I think um, the majority anyway, um, seemed to be quite supportive. And Robin had raised a point about a lot of the um, people who are helping out are not getting paid. They're just experts being consulted and um, donating their time. And I think I, I as I recall, we um, had said that we would try to fully fund it if we had the funds. Okay. Um, that's that's how I remember leaving it. And so when I saw what you have there, I thought, okay, maybe it's because you were spreading everything around. So I didn't raise it in particular, but thank you, Eleanor, for raising it because I am very excited about that project myself. But I should be able to find it here in the PDF too. Um, yeah. I, 
there, Susanna Musrath. So, yeah, there was definitely a lot of, you know, long term public benefit and, you know, the potential to um, really draw draw people to the area along with it really, you know, creating um, historic record of, of this. So uh, just to review the budget, it was going to be $1,200 for uh, stipends, U UMass advanced students to conduct necessary research for text and images to populate website was twelve hundred. Um, I I just if we're doing that, it can't can it be also for um, academic credit because if that was being done as interns, then I or uh, I don't think or like um what's what's the word I'm looking for? No, we. We we resolved. I mean, the issue was previously. I think we were a little unclear about in our guidelines about you know credit mm -hmm. earning projects. Yep. We resolved it. I think pretty clearly in this year's guidelines that allow for as long as there's benefit to the public. You know, we're not going to penalize people for being students. Mm -hmm. I I do notice that we so I I support this as well. I, I think you know my feeling is we should find the three hundred to. Mm -hmm. Fully fund it because I'm, you know, I I, I recall an enthusiastic uh, discussion. I've I've actually talked to several people in town, unrelated to the ACC grant cycle, but I think this is something that folks are talking about. The the business improvement district is excited about it. The cultural district, you know, so I I think we would be, I think it's worth it, worth it to find the three hundred. Okay, um, I'm I'm looking through kind of starting from the top to see um, what we've fully funded. And I think the things that we fully funded, um, we felt really strongly about. So we most likely should not be adjusting those, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, just for point of view, this comes in as our one, two, three, four, five, our sixth uh, highest grant award. And, uh, you know, it, this is a, a really meaty, meaty grant from us and most of the funding. So, you know, kind of moving uh, down, down the group here, um, you know, the Emily Dickinson Museum is, is not fully funded. They asked for 2,500. Uh, we have them in the draft for 2,000. Um, you know, going down from there, there's um, ghost ensembles performing at, at UMass, you know, uh, but we've already taken them down to 1500. So they're 750 less than where they started. Um, we took um, the Valley Winds, right? Uh, we have them at half right now. They asked for 2,500. We have them at 1,250. Christy could kind of spoken. Um, was it Christy who, who was kind of really questioning that? I apologize if I can't recall exactly. Molly um, Woods is really great. Yeah, she, she, yeah. I, so Juliet, I just at a quick glance, um, I might recommend bringing, so line 64 is the Porter Phelps Huntington. Um, we do love them. You know, it's a good museum. It's a great museum. They're not, you know, it's very, it's very much a Hadley museum. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I think we could take, we could take half of it from there. Um, and then the other half from, you know, one of the large grantees, A3 or Amherst Cinema, just to, you know, we, we don't have to do this either, but, you know, I, I, yeah. I think I, I hear from, you know, the members who are here right now and and I agree that this is one of the, you know, this is a pretty unique grant for for our town in terms of public benefit and mm -hmm. local uh, benefit. Okay, I think it's hard to take from Amherst Cinema because we're going to take from Amherst Cinema to put it to Ken Longstreet. Well, that was that. Remember, that was just my arbitrary fourth four thirty. I. Yeah, I don't have a problem taking it from Amherst Cinema. Okay, so let me let me just kind of tell us, right? I mean, I was concerned that the budget was like half of what was needed for this. And didn't you all say that there's a lot of support on uh, from the Cultural Council and the bid? 
Um, and I remember Gabrielle saying that. Um, and the grad student doing the research is just a vendor. So um, I don't think that's a problem. It was just, is this enough money to do this? But that we should have this, you know, kind of. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I have to say that I we don't that. have this in this town, but. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm looking at this. We brought Amherst Cinema up to 2,500, not fully funding them. So, we're saying take an extra 150 from them. So, they would be at 2,350. It's 20, I have, oh, I see. Right. And then I have um, Ken Longstreet at 1,413 to keep things clean. And then I took 150 from Porter Phelps. So with that, we should be. Let me just put another. That that does it. That's that's what we're talking about. I just want to see that calculation here. Um, that, that's the. I'm still off by five hundred yeah. somewhere. What? It's, <laughs> it, it's good. I, I've got, I've got I've got it here. It's it's good. So that's okay. that's the 300 that the stained glass needs to get to full fund. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't put the money back up on the stained glass, I think. Yep. Uh, it's it's good. And then the 413 we just take that back from the um from A3 and, and Amber Cinema and put that on the Long Street. Mhm. Mm oh, so that, I didn't take it from Gallery A3. That's what it was. So Gallery A3 was that an extra 200 something, right? Or 200 based on the email we saw. So whew, what do we, we had them at 2,300 before. All right, if Matt, Matt if you've got it, I, I've seen enough numbers. I, I've got it, it's, it's, okay. it's really just two very simple moves. I'll just say what it is. Um, the 413 that I somewhat arbitrarily just put on Amher Cinema and A3, mm -hmm. I took that back and put it to Long Street. Mm -hmm. And okay. then we took puts, another 150 from AC and a 150 from Porter Phelps. Well, wait, give me give me the numbers. What do you have for Amherst Cinema? What's your number for Amherst Cinema now? 2,350? Uh nope. Hmm. Or is there another? I, I I I know that it works. I mean, I haven't okay. I haven't applied that yet because I, I know what where the money was. It, and, um it if if it's if you go by the same numbers as in your email, Matt, then Julianne, you need to subtract two hundred from Amher, Amher Cinema. So Amher Cinema should be at what now? Help me. What are you? What's your number? Okay, you said you put two thirteen on a. Just, wait a minute, Rachel. What number do you now have for Amher Cinema? Well, if if we're taking two hundred from what you have, it should be two thousand five hundred that Amher Cinema is left with. Is that correct? Minus Matt? another 150 is 2350. Oh, you're taking 150 from there as well. Okay. 2350? Yeah. Yep. So Julianne yeah. had the number. So my right. so right now my total that I'm getting, I believe, is so, is short two hundred dollars that I don't have allocated somewhere. It's it's, it's there, Julianne. I'm not sure where you're I, I'm so not great with that. to do this without seeing what, what everybody's got in front of them. But it, it is there. Yeah. This is this is too pretty yeah. straightforward. I, I, prom I promise you it's there. Yeah. So you're saying we have an extra 200? Is Emily Dickinson supposed to be at 2,000 now? Or did I move money from there? No. Nope. That's correct. I don't correct. think we moved anything from there. So okay. I... I can I can run you down the the, the, okay. the four changed grants, okay? Yeah, let's do it. So Amherst Cinema is twenty three fifty now. Yep, that's what I have. Uh, I'm just going down in order. Gallery A three is twenty five hundred now. That seems like it didn't change, but okay. All right. No, it did. You added two thirteen to it. All right. Next, next one. So. <laughs> next one. Ken Long Street is fourteen thirteen. Mm hmm. And Susanna Musprat is twenty seven hundred. And Porter Phelps Huntington Museum. That's right. Is twelve hundred. I'm sorry. Is um. One thousand. One thousand fifty. Yep, that adds up. Sorry. Yep. 
Yep, I got my number again. All right. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. So before Eleanor falls asleep, would anyone like to motion to approve? <laughs> Eleanor, would you like to do it? Motion to approve. <laughs> motion, motion to vote on. I think you have to request a motion to vote on the final allocations for the 2023. Motion to vote on the final allocations for the 2023 grant cycle. I'll second. second. Okay. Second and third. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I will now take a, a vote call here. Matt. Yes. Eleanor, you're a yes because you, but you could say yes again. Yes. Robin. Yes. Rachel. Yes. Me. Yes. Thank you all. And wow. Anybody who's not in the middle of finals, everybody who's not in the middle of doing finals at a prestigious local university should just think about how much harder it would be if you were studying for God knows how yeah. many tests. Yeah. Thank you all. And we've got our voting meeting done in less than an hour. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Woo. Guys, yeah. what you did on this. It's all and credit to us for having a quorum. We've had a quorum every time, right? We have not failed to have a quorum, and that's that's saying something. It is. Yeah. Thank you for your dedication and thank service. you, Julian and Matt. Yes. And Robin. Yeah. yeah thank you. They're awesome. Yeah, but they did. Yeah. So I think, thanks for all being willing to jump into this new process with us. I I I certainly, you know, liked it better, but then I was in charge. So <laughs> I hope it went okay. And at any time, never hesitate to kick me under the table if I'm like going off the rails or something. So we need to have an in-person meeting for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no mutinies. Yeah, no mutinies over Zoom. I think that's a good, yeah. a good rule. Well, I was trying that there's not even um, you know how sometimes you can do a little like emoji reaction, like a clapping. Yeah. I can't even figure out how to do that on this one. We had an uh, unfortunate event have... with the chat a long time ago, so we no longer have it, and it's to protect. You can only raise your hand. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's why we can do this too. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's it's interesting how many um of the numbers, like based on our ratings, but by the time we finished deliberating, it completely changed from what the initial vote might have been. So that's that's a really interesting. Process. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a good, you know, local governance in action. I mean, we we deliberate and we we do change each other's minds quite a bit. I think that's you know that's that speaks to us as as a as a group. You know, um, absolutely. I I'm gonna I'm going to just uh, throw, I'm just gonna throw this throw this word out to folks. Uh, anybody who's been wondering in the back of their minds. You know, as we went through, I did keep an eye on um, Robin's spreadsheet of folks who have have or have not submitted their final reports for this year. Yeah. I'm going to do a one final review, you know, before we submit our letters. I'm going to do one final review on that. Um, and if anybody that we have approved for a grant has not submitted their final report, you know, they really they have until the last day of the year to do so. And um i'm i'm just keeping my fingers crossed that that will not come up um but but i am going to do one last round of due diligence on that because you know i think it's really exciting to be doing the direct granting um but i also think that the responsibility you know it, it's chasing chasing down folks who take the money and then don't um do their thing and don't return their money that's that's a stretch I, you know i don't think we're likely to do that very well and i don't think the town wants to do it either so so our biggest um you know, our biggest mechanism for making sure that, that this is a is successful and this is a good use of public money is you know from one year to the next to really track who who uses the direct grant money appropriately and so i'm going to do a, a final check on that i encourage you know robin and julianne if you all want to just double check it as well i think you know we obviously we give people the benefit of the doubt and we, you know reach out to them and stuff we're not just going to be draconian about stuff but but we should since we're doing direct grants, we should we should be confident, you know, in in that before we send checks this this next time. So Thanks for bringing that up, I appreciate gonna, that. Oops, sorry. Are you going to send out? A, well, I mean, check with me that I didn't miss. Yeah, I, something fingers in. crossed. I, um, like I said, I've been keeping I've been keeping one eye on both spreadsheets, so I I don't think there's anybody that I missed, but I do want to do one last 
you know, kind of methodical check? Well, there are grantees who did the gig and I know they did the gig, but we don't have the final report for. This well, year's people, issue. people that we just voted on? Um, I'm not sure because I'd have to. That's, that's, it's, it's a bit of a research project. So yeah, I, I really appreciate you. And I thought about that. it, like, are we gonna give them grants if we don't have the final report? Yeah, but I don't, I don't think we need to keep discussing it here. We just, the three of us have some work, work to do along those lines and, you know, we'll, we'll do our due diligence. And so, so what you're raising is that um, of the people who have not um, filed their final reports, that we're not going to be giving them grant grants again this year. Is that it? Like, that's kind of the bottom line. Is that... Okay. It, I think we first need to find out, you know, how many people are actually in that situation and look at it. But um, I, I think we're 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 good as we we are set. Um, and keep in mind that while we finalize this by our vote, we do have the process. We have to put the denial letters out, and then if there is anything that the MCC requires us to reconsider again, then we have a chance to reconsider literally everything. I hope we wouldn't. <laughs> but um, yeah. No. I, I don't think we would we wouldn't go back to no. the drawing board on that. I, I think we would just those, yeah. those funds would just you know sit. Yeah. That's so. Point. So so with that, if we don't have any other urgent business, I'd like to um, motion to um, close the meeting, close the twenty twenty three grant cycle. When are we? Do we have another meeting scheduled already, or that's there's a tentative done. tentative for January fourth. If we have business otherwise i think we we won't keep the january 4th date we would uh set up a, a later a session later in january okay. agreed matt just to put you on the spot yeah and i well just since you brought it up so that we you know if we have any reconsiderations that mcc you know advises that we meet on then we'll need that january 4th date to do that so that's that's the that would be the business um so hope, hopefully not, hopefully we can get these letters, you know, it, it does take quite a bit of time to get all the letters cranked out. Um, so I think, you know, we would, hopefully we'll meet in late January, I think is my my feeling. I agree. And I would say that if there was a reconsideration meeting, it isn't something that generally should be a long meeting. We would meet right. just long enough to discuss the business at hand and then adjourn. That's right. Yep. Thank you. So the late January meeting is yet to be scheduled, and I just want to make sure I didn't miss a date or something. Nope. Like that. Okay, thank you very much. And when are you going right. to find out about this other $2,500 grant, dollar grant mm -hmm. that you all made for the festival project? That's a, that's a good question. It should be before the end of this month, so we should know it. Cool. I'll definitely I will let folks know when we hear about it. It's a good, okay. all know about it. it's a good And did we, did we vote to approve the 7500 for the cultural district? And if not, should we do that before we adjourn? I literally cannot recall. Well, that's I, I, I thought that was the whole thing. within the slate of what we sent yeah. out and voted on. Or the whole budget. So. Well, I guess if it was if it was on there, then good, we're good. It's on there. Okay. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. Thanks, everyone. Good. Enjoy the holidays. Bye, we'll come back. Good everything on there. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Safe Bye, travels. Everybody. Bye. Bye.